lot of times you'll hear people talking about complex data engineering things like data streaming, CI pipelines, but many times all we really need to do is just work with some CSV files. Surprisingly, it's not very intuitive with SQL Server. So let's walk through three of the key functions in SQL Server for working with CSV files. Here we are in my SQL Server instance. We're gonna work in a demo DB here. And the short answer is if you right click and go to tasks, here is where everything is gonna happen. And if you're like me, you're probably somebody who's worked in SQL Server for years and never even knew about this. It took me a while until somebody pointed this out to me. So you go to tasks, and the first one we're gonna look at is import flat file. So let's go ahead and click that. Here it's gonna walk you through a wizard to upload a file. We're gonna work with CSVs, but this could be text files, it could be other types of delimited files. Let's click next. And now we need to find the file to be imported. Pretty straightforward. So we'll go to browse, and I'm going to do this file here. It's Fandango Scrape. Fandango is a site for movies, and in this case here, this data set is a bunch of ratings for different films. What this will do is take the output of this file and create a brand new table in your database for you. You can select a schema. In our case, we only have one, but if you had other ones, obviously they would be here. We'll keep this same name, go next. And here it gives you a preview of the data. The next option here is to modify the columns. So for what we're importing, we can change the data type if we want select the primary key, allow nulls, just as if we were creating a new table. As you can see, it's interpreting it based on the data that it previewed. All right, next, here's the information on what it's going to do. It's going to create this table in this database based on this file. Finish. And that was very quick and close. Now, if we go into our database here and refresh, here, now we can see it. So let's go ahead and select and we can see all the records here, it just imported it just like that for us. So we can see it created the column names with the data types and the nulls, all that stuff. All right, so that's how you import a CSV and create a new table from scratch. The next option we're going to look at is how to import data, but not necessarily create a new table. What we'll do is import into this same table, truncate. All right, so how will we do that? We'll go back to our database, right click, again, tasks. And this time we'll do import data instead of import flat file, we'll do import data. It'll be similar, but with some slightly different options as we'll see. First step, it's saying, what's the data source? There's a lot of options here and there's a lot of conditions, but we don't really need to worry about too much of this here. There's different providers. It'll be kind of similar if you're used to SSIS, some of these connections. And what we're going to look at in this case is the flat file source, because again, we're pulling a file from our machine here. Where is the file? We'll go to browse and I need to show CSVs and here it is. So we'll click this guy. Now, in this case, this worked fine for me. It defaulted it to 1252, but I have seen scenarios where you'll get some errors because this code is kind of goofy. So I suggest if you do go through this and you have errors, come through and just double check that you're on ANSI Latin one, I think that is 1252. I don't really know too much about the specifics of this, but I know that a lot of times that can cause errors. So double check that that's what you want. All right, format delimited. We're not skipping any rows and we can go to columns and see it's picking this up for us. If we go to advanced, it has these columns and one option we have is suggest types. And what this will do is kind of like what we did before. It's going to read the data and interpret what the data types should be. If we Click okay, you see string, string, float, integer, stars. We don't want this to be a string necessarily. So you got to take some of this with a grain of salt. We'll make this one a float as well to match with what the current database is showing. Otherwise you might get flag. It'll say, you know, the data types don't match. In general, some of this stuff I will say with SQL Server and uploading CSVs can be a little bit of a headache. So you got to just go through and check some of these things that you're all lined up. Okay. Preview. Again, we're not skipping any data rows. It's starting right from the top. And let's click next. Now the destination, we want our destination to be our SQL Server database. Technically, we could use this engine to upload to all these different places, just like an SSIS package. But for our case, like we said, SQL Server. So we're gonna go Microsoft OLEDB provider for SQL Server. This is our server name. We're going to use Windows authentication. 
if you wanted to use a specific user, maybe there's certain permissions for where you're trying to upload, you could put that in here. In my case, my Windows user will have permissions. This is the database. Next. Now the source, where do we want this to land? And just like before, you could actually use this same wizard and make a brand new table as well. But in our case, we'll keep it the same thing because we want to insert into that existing one. Let's look at the mappings. And here we can see it's all mapping this out correctly. You could ignore or change things if you wanted. You can select some other options here as well, but we'll just select OK. Preview, these green check boxes, that's good. That means everything matches. There's no obvious errors that the underlying wizard is identifying. But if we did have a different data type or something else was not aligned, you would get a different icon here, a warning symbol or an error or something like that. Here we can determine what happens if it fails or not. Okay, so let's go next. We're gonna run this immediately. And like we said, there is a lot of similarities here between this and SSIS and you could save this as an SSIS package and run this again, but we're just going to do it one time. Next, there's some more details and select finish. And it went through and we can see it failed. And let's take a look at this. We look at this message. Unfortunately, like I said, a lot of this can be a little tough to interpret. And we can see that there was a conversion error on stars. Even though we got all those green check marks, there was an error as it processed. And if we look down here, we can see there was an error on row 49. So let's open up that file and see what's going on on row 49. Let's scroll down. And here, if we look at this record here, remember this is a comma separated list. But if we look here, there's a comma in the data itself. And that's what's throwing it off in this case. Here's the other example here. There's a comma here. It's cutting off the column there. It's thinking that that's the end of it. And then it's saying the errors on stars, but I know that that error is because of that comma. And if you're working with CSVs, that's going to be something that you see happening a lot. What I want to do also is open this with Notepad to show how we're going to fix this. If we look in Notepad, if we go down to that same example, we can see here that the way they've uploaded it, you can't see this in Excel, but they surrounded it with quotes. And that is to help indicate that this is a single string this is the value we care about for that part of the, the record. And this is important to point out because this is going to give us the answer to fix this. So let's go back, back, all the way back. And what we're going to do is go to general and this can be uh, a common error. So hopefully this will save you a lot of time. What you want to do is go to the text qualifier. Right now we have none and change this to the double quotes because we've noticed that the double quotes are what's qualifying that particular text and doesn't get tripped up by that comma. So now let's go all the way back and finish. And this time it worked all 510 rows transferred. And let's again, select from here and we could see all of the data is back and we're good to go. The third and final thing we're going to look at is how to do the opposite. How can we extract this data from an existing table before we've shown how to import data? How do we take it out? And unsurprisingly, it's going to be under tasks as well. And if we go to the third option here, export data, let's click that. This one will be very similar, but it's going to be in the opposite direction for our scenario. So what's the source? This time our source is SQL Server because we want to take from SQL Server and put to a file. Let's go to OLEDB SQL Server, same thing. Next, now the destination in our case is the flat file. We'll create a CSV, but it could be, you know, whatever you want. Let's go to browse and I'll put this on the desktop. We'll call this test output.csv. Same situation here. And the text qualifier, let's again replace this with the double quotes to be safe. Next, here there's two options for what we can do with this. We can either copy or write a query to specify the data. In our case, we're copying exactly what's there. We're not selecting or doing anything specific. We'll stay with that option and select next. The table we are sourcing from is that same one, Fandango scrape. It will be comma delimited, but again, you could switch this if you want. It's going to split each record up. Mappings, we identify how we want that to map in the file. Okay, quick preview. Next, same scenario here. Next, finish and all successful. 510 rows, transferred, closed. Now let's take a look at this file and here it is. It's test output, it just 
dropped it here for us. And if we open this up, here are all of the records. This is what we just outputted. And if we were to look at it as notepad, here's what it looks like. It's separating everything in a quote. But yeah, you can see that is how you export some data into a CSV form from SQL Server. I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.